of the things I like to chat about is everybody likes to do the crab claw, right? So when you're massaging, you're doing the pinchy motion, and you're not really moving anything else, you just got this movement going on. That's a really fast way to kind of injure your wrist, get that repetitive motion of um, your as well as it's not as effective because there's very tiny muscles in your hands that control fine movement. But your bigger muscles are going to be in the rest of your arm and in your body. And so what we're going to talk about is a little bit of body mechanics. So when it comes to massage, what you want to actually do is use your body weight behind you. So you're not always going to be sitting on the floor at the same level as the other person. Um, one way that we're going to do it, and you guys can stay seated. Do you mind if I stand behind you? So one thing that you can do is you're kind of going to get in a squat. You're going to bend your knees, bend your hips a little bit. You put your arms and your hands on that person. I'm not pushing with my hands. I'm just leaning forward. Okay? So I'll show you what that feels like. Can I stand behind you? So I put my hands on the back of your shoulders. I'm going to bend my knees and lean forward a little bit. Does that feel better than if I like, squeeze a little bit with my hands? Yeah. You feel it. And you can adjust this at any degree. If that's uncomfortable, um, if you have any back pain or you can't do the press of force down, you can have someone lean against you in a chair and you can do the same thing where they're at a little bit of an angle. Um, so a lot of what you're doing is not in the hands. It's going to be in your body. You know, there's going to be a lot of like wider stance, bend your knees, you know, lean forward. That kind of thing will help you out a lot, okay? If you're doing something that feels uncomfortable, Feel free to stop and adjust and find a different way to stand or walk or sit behind that person that makes it more uh, comfortable and easy to apply that pressure. All right, so one of the things we're gonna start with is, um, so we're doing that, we lean, we're not doing this grabby thing. The other thing is you are gonna use your hands but you don't wanna do the this, you're not spreading it out because this puts more pressure on individual fingers so you kind of bring it together and make a paddle. Um, that's for me. All right, so let's start with the head. Who wants to be the body first and who wants to do the massage first? Can you do that? Okay, so I want one of you to sit crisscross applesauce at the top of the blanket. And then the other person is going to put their head on your legs. So you're gonna lay it back on, on your back. Here, here, uh, on the knee. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm all confused. That's okay, we'll switch. You'll get, we'll get both opportunities. Okay, so I want you to take your hands and I want you to scoop them underneath your neck and head. You're kind of going to cradle it gently. Okay. You can kind of feel the weight of your head against your hands. And you can relax your head down, let it fall to the ground. And so what I want you to do is I want you to bring your fingers up just a little bit, like just gently and slowly, and then back down. How does that feel? Good. I just jerked my neck when the same was shuffling. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. The same. Right. And how does that feel for you? Is that easier than what you've done before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it? I've been trying to rub her neck for the last three days. She's got like a knot on one side. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is gravity is doing a lot of the work. You're just making small movements where you're just adjusting your hands a little bit. And then as you're doing it, you're doing great. You're pulling towards yourself a little bit. You're going up that neck into the occipitals. So the occipitals is that little like bony ridge at the back of the head. So if you just kind of scoop in and hold on those for a minute, it's awesome. There you go. Yeah. So this is great. It's like the simplest massage technique you can do for a person. Um, and gravity does all the work for you. So it keeps it nice and simple. <laughs> You're suddenly like, he's not that bad at this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the reason why I asked for your email, I'm going to send you all my notes from the class so that way you can reference them again. Thank you. All right. So, yeah. So what you're going to do now is you're going to bring your hands out to the side a little bit, kind of scoop the sides. And where your thumb is, you're right on that temple. You're going to go up a little bit. You're just going to do little circles. And with that, since we're not using lotion yet, like what you want to do when you move is you want to lift to move it to a different spot. There you go. 
Perfect. You can go all the way down that side of the face here. With the mask, it's a little interruptive, but you know, if you go into that like cheek edge here, that's helpful too. So all of those little little nerves and muscles in your face that you don't think about every day can really create a lot of stress. And these are really easy ways to work on someone without having to use a ton of you know, strength to do it. we can get a feel for it and then if you guys want to try it again or if you have any questions that I can help you with. So walk you through it again. So you're gonna kind of put your hands together behind his head like that and scoop it and you're gonna just lean your fingers so that your fingers go up a little bit. So you got it. And now you can do kind of like that scoop up a little bit if you want to get yeah, there you go. You got that scooping motion there. And then you can kind of feel as you're going up, there's that occipital ridge at the top. You can kind of just sit there for a moment. How's that feeling for you? Good. Good. How does it feel to do it? Yeah, easy? Yeah. <laughs> It's different than what I've ever done. I usually yeah. set up for set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, this is a great way to have gravity do a lot of the work for you because that way you're not putting the pressure down, you're just letting their body weight do the work. Okay. Yeah. So then you're going to kind of scoot your hands off to the sides and bring your hands around the side of his head. There you go. Temples. Perfect. Little circles. Yeah, you've got it. <laughs> yeah. So you can always like change it up and pick a different movement or you know figure aids like you're doing there. Um, the temples are a really great place because you hold a lot of stress, especially if you have headaches and stuff like that. It's good to check in with your partner a lot, make sure it's not hurting. And if it is hurting, let them know. Don't try to tough it through. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time people won't hurt each other, but I just say it because some people are like, oh, pain is gain, and then they tense up and it doesn't help them as much. But... She's doing harder. harder. <laughs> All right, and then fingertips at the brow line. And then gently, and then you're just gonna lean back a little bit. So you're using that body weight instead of pulling with your arms. Might feel a little funny to remind yourself to lean, but it'll help be helpful. So nice hands. There you go. Lean just a little. There you go. It's like core work. Yeah. So you can sit forward a little bit, and then you're gonna place your hands, and then just keeping your arms the way they are, lean gently, like just a little bit. Yeah. There you go. Coming together a little easier that way. There you go. All right, so that's some head work for you. Do you have any questions or is there anything I can help to make it easier? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, so that's, that's great. 
you can also do what, what I was showing you was kind of static frictions and pulls. You can do circular frictions where you're not leaning so much as you're just doing little movements together. Um, you can also do a split where your hands are together in the back and you just bring them out to the sides and as gravity pulls their head down, it kind of tractions their neck a little bit. So there's a couple variations that you can do with movement where your hands are just doing a different pattern on the back of the neck or on the front of the forehead and the temples. Okay? Um, Let's do some neck and shoulders while seated. So we're gonna get a chair and bring that over. Let me know if you need a hand. <laughs> yeah, we just need one person in the chair. And I'm gonna move this so we're not standing on them. The great thing is you have a lot of mobility with your body. You can do a lot more pressure. So this is gonna be great when she's on the chair, you can do all the pressure you want. So what you wanna do is remember that there is the front of the neck that you don't wanna be grabbing, so right in here. But you can still wrap your hand around someone's on the side here and not be pressing on that spot. So you're not gonna be pressing on the carotid artery or anything like that. Um, this is a pretty safe place to grab. You know, there's that squishy spot here. All of that is pretty safe. You can do a pretty decent amount of work without bothering someone. So, the first thing you can do is kind of what I was saying where you're using that slide. So I put a hand here just to stabilize because other ways people tend to lean. And then you're just leaning back a little bit. So like right here, if you watch my leg, it's gonna bend. I'm not pulling. So the difference is, I'm getting a little bit of a traction there. Yeah. And like, I'm not using any lotion, so there's a little bit of friction there, but I'm not causing like skin burn from pulling fast and hard. So just gentle, and you're letting your hands slide slowly. And now I do have lotion over there if you wanna try and see what it feels like to do it with a little bit of lotion. It'll make things a little slippery, so you have to make sure that you're not like leaning back a bunch and then you fall over when your hand falls off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, you can stabilize with one hand, kind of just gently scoop that side and then bend your knees. You know, slowly feel your hand scoop across their neck. And you can also stabilize with this thumb here. You're just not going to be pressing with it really hard. So, again, that's just like this hand, it's just support. But just there to make sure that as I pull, I'm not wrenching his head sideways or anything like that. So, you can let that rest there. Um, you just don't want to be squeezing really hard with it. Okay? Can I give that a try? You want to bend your legs? There you go. Feel similar? You want to do it too hard? Yeah, as you, you get past it. Your... Your... My thumb is here. So you're going to bring it back to the center line and that's where that grip kind of relaxes. So like lean your body back. Okay. You kind of feel how you get a lot more there? Yeah. Okay. And a small movement and then you can let go and let that hand relax and then reset. So a lot of this you just want to have like loose hands very soft. You don't have to be squishing or holding. Okay. I'm not trying to choke my ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I want you to come on this side and do the opposite. So you're going to switch hands. There you go. And then move with the body. A little easier, huh? Now, while you're standing here, if you look at where your wrist is right there, it's kind of bent. Okay. So you're at hyperextension. You want to move your body to the left a little bit. Okay. You want to keep this wrist from bending too much. So you're going to just use it like a paddle that's not going to bend too much. And you know, move your body. There you go. A little easier. It doesn't hurt as much. Mm -hmm. More sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So if, you're, if your wrists are bent back, if you see those creases here, or if it's bent forward and you feel that strain in the top of your hand, that's going to cause that kind of strain over time. So if you can 
if you see it, think about how you can move to reduce it. Okay? And have you switch. We're gonna do a bunch of switching chairs. <laughs> Okay, so do you want me to show you how I was doing it? Sure. All right. So we're going to flip your collar down here. So you're just going to put a gentle hand on the side of the neck. Like I was saying, you don't want to get on the front of the neck. You want to get on this kind of like squishy side here. This is all a safe area to work in. You'll feel that squishiness here in that shoulder. So you're going to put your hand kind of gently there. You're just resting it. I put a hand on the shoulder to balance. And then if you watch my knees, they're going to bend a little bit as I lean. So I'm not, I'm not pulling this way. I'm just leaning away from her. And it's a small movement. It doesn't have to be much. Now, if you like a lot of pressure, you want in that stance, you can lean further. And with this, I'm not, I'm not allowing my fingers to slide. I'm just putting that hook there and then leaving it in place and pulling. How's that feel? That feels good. Okay. All right. I'm have you do that. So gentle hand. And then I'm gonna have you take a, like a half step back. There you go. And then I want you to gently lean. Perfect, you got the knee movement, awesome. How's that feel? Very similar? There you go. And so I was telling Karen, you, you feel it too, where you're sliding, but you're not causing any friction, burn, or discomfort, but you still get a little bit of that movement without lotion. So, again, you can always try it with lotion. It just makes it a little, a little different. Um, you get more glide. It's uh, not as deep of a pressure. And now switch sides. You got that knee bend, perfect. Awesome. Yeah, and you can feel your wrist is nice and straight. It's not straining anything, is it? Mm -hmm. A little easier than what you normally used to? Yeah. All right, awesome. Squishy spot here, that tense area, you can feel the muscle in there. You're just gonna put your hands gently and then you're gonna lean forward. And the part that's pressing is that palm. One that palm contact, so like you can wiggle your fingers, but you still have that pressure there, steady. Um, depending on your wrist and your arm and length, you may want to stand a little closer, or you may want to stand a little bit further back. Now, if you're standing back, you tend to push forward a little bit, so that person will be resisting. So pressing more down is going to be more effective. And again, this is definitely a matter of is it comfortable for you when I press down? Okay. okay. <laughs> I still like the cooling on. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have that one where you can just press your hands in. And then there's a modification because after a while, your wrist can get a little tired from that. You're just going to put your forearm there. So you just put that forearm right on the shoulder, and you can do both sides, too. So in this, I'm going to take a step back because I don't want to be bending at the waist as much. And you can kind of tell if you're paying attention to the legs. That I'm squatting more than anything, so I'm not bending or pressing down this way. My arms are just there, I'm bending, leaning forward, and then I scoot up a little bit to readjust because you know I'm going to slide some. Then you can pick like if this kind of stance is helpful. Some people like to do like the plank thing. Um, it's up to you to figure out where it's more comfortable for your body. Okay, give that a try. So you're going to do gentle wrists, just lean them down. There you go. You bend your knees. There you go. Kind of feel that extra weight, a little bit more pressure when he bends his knees. Mm -hmm. Perfect. How's that feel with your wrist and hands? Also rock left to right, so you can press on the left hand, right hand. There you go, you got that lean in there. Perfect. Awesome. How's that? <laughs> 
there you're getting a lot more of your body weight behind it, so you can do that pressure without having to strain your arms. Yeah. Yep, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'll make sure he doesn't hit the ground that he's already sitting. <laughs> This is also why check-ins are great. You can always check with your partner and you can be like, do you want more pressure? And <laughs> you can adjust that way along the way. things with the pillow you can have them sit in front of you put a pillow on your shins have them lean against you and do that pull um, you may want to remove some of your chunkier I'm, I'm fine. okay <laughs> sweet yeah I was gonna say if you've got any like rhinestones they're not as comfortable but if you have like a thin band it's not gonna matter as much in your fist, okay, and then lean with the whole body. Keep these elbows out a little bit so you're not bending your wrist. Feels a little funny, but you can do it. There you go. How's that feel for your body while you're doing that? Feels a little different to do, but once you get it, it feels easier. There you go. Yeah, you can stabilize with this lift. Me, next to the side. Alrighty. <laughs> there you go, and then I'll have you switch. If you want to sit in the chair, I'll have them do that behind you. So, what we did was, you're going to do your kind of dental fist. This area of your hand is going to go against the back of the neck. You want to go on the side, kind of underneath the ear, not quite to the front. So, you do that scoop here. We're pressing together gently, and then you're going to do that little bit of lean back. So my arms aren't moving, my fists aren't moving, my body is moving all of it with me. So you're kind of doing a squish together and a pull, so you're doing that movement. Alright? You want to just go gentle and slow. There you go, get that knee bend in. Awesome. This is my favorite thing for headaches, by the way, is the occipital holding and then this movement here. How's that feel? How's that feel on your body? Comfortable? So I'm gonna have you gently relax your fist a little bit. I want you to straighten out your fist and there you go. Get that movement. Feeling good? Awesome. Okay. Do you have any questions on neck and shoulder? Anything I could help make easier? <laughs> You're just like, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So since you're in the chair, I'll just do a, a quick, um, if, you, if you have someone sitting there and you want to bring some of it together, you know, you can start with just kind of compressions, you know, this is the same polo, going gentle. And kind of roll your arms up and back. And then you're bringing your hands here. You 
can do that one sided. So you can practice. Yeah, this is what I was saying. If you don't quite have the right angle, you can always just do that one side. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll brace, like I'll put my hip against you so that way I'm leaning into me. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Now seated, the neck is a little bit tense. So sometimes like having someone on the floor like before is helpful. But you can also do like the side of the head, you can do a little traction. That's kind of bringing it up near that temple and the cheek, or from the cheek a little bit into that temple. And what you're doing here is you're just kind of doing like a little bit of a lift, you're doing the lift squish. So what you were doing in our face earlier, but um, in a vertical standard instead of sideways. <laughs> so you just kind of squeeze and pull up a little bit. And this is gentle, again, if someone has injuries to the neck, don't do this. Um, be very gentle when you're doing it. You can kind of do the same thing where you're grabbing the back here around that occipital and just doing like a traction. So this is more up towards me and back. And these are very, very small movements. You'll notice like, you don't really notice what my body is moving, but she can feel it. So like you're just doing that little bit of movement where you're pulling. And that's how you can kind of bring that knee, neck and shoulder together. If you're just, you know, working on someone for a minute. So yeah, let's do some arms and hands. So um, we're gonna have you sit facing each other a little bit. So again, with this one, you're going to have a lot of ability to lean. So you're doing it great where you're sitting kind of towards that edge of the chair. You're going to want to pop your chair back a little bit. Right. So let's start with your yogi massaging. What you're going to do is, um, let me show you one. So with the arm and hand, you have a handful of joints. You have your shoulder joint, you have your, um, uh, <laughs> your elbow, and you have your wrist. You have a whole bunch of little joints in here where all the bones come together in your hand. So when you're working on someone's arm, you want to support those kinds of joints. Because if I'm just holding her hand there, you notice it's bending there and it's kind of straining it. So if you're going to be working on someone's hand, you want to support it. You can let your hand fall on the floor, let your head leave, take a deep breath in, and try to push it into the ground. And there you go. Awesome. So you see she bent her arm, I can move it, and it's not tensing up on me. Okay. So with the shoulder, Again, this thumb is a support, so we're not pressing and grabbing. We're just, you know, gently pressing into the shoulder. And I'm supporting up to that elbow there. I'm supporting that wrist with my arm here. So pressing, just gently. And again, you don't want to be doing this with your wrist. You want to kind of make sure that it's flat. So your hand can shift that way if you need to. Some people's wrists tend to change depending on what they do every day. You're just pressing, pressing. Here you're doing a little bit of a squeeze, but again, you're doing like a gentle and then you're pushing that into the arm. So you're doing more of like a cup instead of claw. And again, supporting that elbow and that wrist. You can do the standing, but you lose a little bit of that pressure because you have to bring your arm up higher. Um, and you want to support a little lower. But if you're sitting next to them, you can lean into them instead of leaning down. And that alleviates the pressure here because this joint is designed to lift, not to support in a weird like direction. Um, so if you had a shoulder injury recently, you want to be a lot gentler. You're going to want to be going up more than down. So you don't want to pull on that. So just kind of squish. You can do the cup press. And cup, press, you know, down the arm. Now in here, this little squishy spot where your arm bends, you have a lot of nerves and you have um, an artery going through there, so you don't want to put your thumb in that spot and press because that can be really uncomfortable. So I'm being very gentle, but you know, if you want to be careful, you're going to avoid that little joint right there. You can go right above it, right below it, but you don't want to go right in it. Okay. And then we can still support her arm here. So I have her arm facing down, hand down, squishing the muscles on the top of the hand. And I'm using that pad of the hand instead of the fingertips. So you're just kind of pressing. Press. 
And this is a little bit of a sandwich, like I am supporting this arm, but I'm not pressing together, I'm just holding it there. This is a great, good thing you can do on a table too. So if you're sitting at the dining room table, you know, you can lean the arm against it. Here we're doing the opposite side. And again, we're using here, not the, not the thumb, we're not doing the grabby thing, we're just press. We're doing a little bit of that lean to get it in. So since I'm supporting her arm, what I did is I put my elbow, I tucked it into my side. So now it's not gonna go anywhere. It's essentially become a little table for me. Get that squish. Right, and then a little bit. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. And then you can also do a compression where these thumbs aren't doing anything, you're kind of doing, you're doing a grippy. So you do a compression, compression. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, so the fun thing is you have all these tendons that go into your hands when I poke at them. Your hand tries to open and close. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. You can play with that if you do some palpation and whatnot. You can let your hand fall. So we're gonna keep that compression here. And part of what I'm doing is I'm compressing away. So I'm doing a little bit of like a grip slide. And what that's doing is that's opening up in that, in that wrist and in that hand. So it's right underneath the wrist. So my fingers are here. I'm kind of grabbing in the middle of her palm. I'm pressing on the top and then I'm kind of squishing away. So my thumbs are just supporting, but I'm like rotating a little bit on that. So I'm using them as a kind of a pinpoint instead. So you're just doing that compression all the way down. And then you can keep on doing that. You're just kind of, kind of squish a hand, squish the fingers. You need some pulling, you can do gentle like traction, but you're doing that same thing where you're squishing. You're kind of doing that, not a grabby claw, but more of like a hook. And that thumb is gentle on the side. You don't feel like I'm pressing here. Just gentle, gentle, gentle. And most of that pressure is coming from this. So. Little wiggles, all different kinds of stuff. This is also a great place where you're talking about circular frictions, which is that like circular movement is in the palm, doing a round circle. All right. So again, we just kind of did compressions down the arm. We did two-handed compressions down here. We did the same thing on the wrist, and then we did a few finger tractions, okay? We give that a try. you can do if you're like laying in bed and you can't sleep and your arms hurting or something you can you know cuddle up next to someone and just do these compressions on their arm while they're lying on their side that kind of thing it's really easy to change your body mechanics and sit in a different way or stand in a different way to really you know make it comfortable to do yeah yeah and that's why i say like keep trying different ways if you notice that something doesn't feel good like stop and think about why it doesn't feel good be like, oh, my wrist is bending, it hurts because my wrist is, you know, uncomfortable. And then just be like, well, how can I make it not bend? You know, like take a step back or take a step forward or move off to the left or use your ulnar blade instead. There's so many options to do it. That looks like I didn't do it. <laughs> the oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Your arm. Mm -hmm. Pets get you just like kids. It's a boxer. He's got a thumb. He lets himself mm -hmm. in the house. Oh my god. I love puppies. Yeah, so. <laughs> he had it from here all the way down to here too. Oh no.
how's that feel for you? Are you getting the squish in your hand and less in your thumb? So try, try not moving that thumb too much. There you go. Feel a little different, huh? Yeah. And the nice thing is when you're, when you're not doing things like using that thumb that wears out fast or bending the wrist backwards, you have more stamina and you can do this a little bit longer um, and feel better at the end, actually. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a squish and then kind of traction out. How's that feel? Good. Yeah, you're doing great there. You can even start in between the fingers. Um, you can kind of like, you can bring your hand up here. There you go. So kind of like you're doing that thumb, you're gonna bring your hand and reset it in between those fingers there. Does that feel a little different, but it feels like a longer stretch on that flange? There you go. And you don't think about how much stress is in your hand every day when you're working at a computer or on the phone or driving. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say guys, like this is their favorite thing every time I get to it, because a lot of them have never had someone do that to them before. So um yeah. Alright. Feeling comfortable with that? Alright. So give that a try. I'm leaning in. Yeah, so you wanna support his arm. You want to let your arm be heavy, fall to the floor, bend your elbow. Yeah. Well, uh, Jocelyn, you shake them. Shake, 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 shake. <laughs> there you go, shake, shake, shake. And you'll notice like as their elbow starts falling back towards their body, you're like, there you go. Perfect. All right. Yep, you're going to do that press. So I'm actually going to have you switch hands. I want you to use your, yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to have him bend his arm over yours. Is that a little easier? You got that body lean in it. Okay. Rotate your hand just a little bit so you're not, there you go. A little better on the wrist. Yeah. How's that feeling? can be a little sensitive around the deltoid, especially if you're using your arms a lot. The deltoid is kind of that little cake here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, not when you're the one getting a massage though. <laughs> Again, this is one of those things where I'm teaching you guys more static compressions and you can definitely use a little lotion to make it more glidey. Um, I'm happy to have you give that a try at the end of the class and you know get a feel for what that might be like. And there's a lot of options. You can actually buy what I have on Amazon. Um, so like professional lotions are great. They're not that expensive. You can even use things like if you like coconut oils or olive oils, like those are great for your skin. What's you know. the one we Okay, and then do a squishy. Yeah, so you're gonna do kind of, you're rotating a little bit, there you go. You're gonna be doing kind of this instead of this. So you're gonna rotate so that your hand is relaxed your hand a little bit. Rotate. And you can press. You're gonna do, you're gonna do this. You're grabbing. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You kind of got it. And you can adjust if that's not a comfortable move for you. If that, if you can't quite get your grip around his arm, you can always do that compression that we were doing. You can do it at a different angle. Um, like so, I said, that jostling is really great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can do just like the one-handed thing. So I'm squeezing. Yeah, in there. 
How's that feel? Good. A little easier to do than the grippy claw? No, but I just didn't know if I was doing it right. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes I can get, start squeezing too hard, I think, because I yeah. have a tendency to like... Humans are incredibly resilient. Um, it takes a lot of pressure to hurt a person. And if you're, that is if you're trying to do something nice and you're not using your fingertips or something like that or in that, you know, sensitive area. But sometimes it can be, you can use a lot more pressure than you think. So, you know, you can also utilize your landscape. Like I said, we bring up a table that can make it a little different. That way you don't have to encompass the whole arm. Because, you know, if you look at the radius of your arm versus the radius of his arm, there's a big difference. And, you know, his hands may be bigger or larger than yours. And we're both like Lilliputians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everyone's going to be a different body shape and size and have different, um, different structural comfort when they're working on someone. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say you want to relax your hands so it's not just on that ball there. So you're doing okay. There you go. Let that relax. Oh, that okay. sucks, sucks. There you go. Press in. There you go. Okay. Yeah, because when you start doing that temple, you're just writing on here and here, and then the rest of your hand isn't doing anything. Okay, so I'm like just smushing them. Yeah, kind of just smushing them. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk about dinner while you're doing this. You can just kind of, you're leaning your body weight into it. And here, like, I'm not using all of my body weight, I'm using some of it to support. But I'm really letting gravity do a lot of the work, so you can give that a try. You're just kind of leaning your arm on his. How's that feel? Not too hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of work with what you know and you can adjust. You can use different tools, so your arm, your forehands, your, sorry, your forearms and your hands. I said that backwards. There you go. Yeah. Cool. And see, so you've got that knee up. That's a great way to support it, where you're letting some of that gravity, you know, let his hand rest somewhere. You want to slide down that finger. There you go. Good grip. Same thing where you're you're kind of grabbing and sliding down. You want to go in between those fingers. So you're going to that thumb is going to support. You're going to squish in between here. Slide. There you go. So you're kind of separating a little bit of that tension in the hand in between the bones. And you can feel the bone structures. That's that harder spot. There's squishy spots in between. That's what you're aiming for. You can do that between each of them. another fun thing that's a little bit more self-massage, but if your hand is bothering you, you want to work on it and someone's not there, just put it down and your elbow into it. So it's similar to what you're doing there. And you can kind of adjust if you want to point in your spot, you just bend your arm more. If you want to get like the whole palm, you just put your arm flat. So if you're if you're at home and you've had like a hard day and you're not home yet, you can always you know work on your hand by just moving into it. is with the leg you know a couple different ways you can sit directly in front of them I prefer to be off to the side because again I can use that knee Are you ticklish okay if someone is ticklish just placing their foot very firmly on your knee or on the floor and then not scooping under their um, under that uh, arch yes words yeah so you can avoid that ticklish by just pressing so that way you're not touching the bottom of the foot um, but what you want to do is really just like firm, broad pressure. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be, you know, full palm contact. Um, so you, you do have the shin bone here. You want to be a little gentle around that. You mostly working off to the sides because that's where the musculature is. 
with the foot, you can kind of do what you were doing to that hand, which is just that squish. Again, the thumbs aren't doing much, you're kind of doing a, a grip. So, and then as you can see, like I'm just leaning my whole body into it, my torso and whatnot. The grains were keen with using two portions on the bottom of the foot, and you just started rustling. Yeah. And they tried to do the twist. Yeah, and so here, this is maybe the only time when a grippy claw is helpful. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab right underneath that heel bone, and you're just going to get a good grip, and then lean it away, and then pulling. So again, that grip isn't doing this, it's just holding and then moving. So you get that grip here. Yeah, and so what we're doing, we're essentially just like grabbing and holding, and then we're using that traction, that leaning back, to make the actual movement. So you can go up around that um, angle a little bit. You can even use a grip compressor in the back here. And if they're not, to push through a little bit of that like, cup on the bottom. And then when you're leaning, you're essentially pushing your arm down the way. So you get that grip. And see, when your thumb is gripping with you, when you're doing the hook and you get a little bit more pressure because you're not putting on one from This isn't as comfortable long to do for me, um, but that way they're pressing into my leg no matter what direction I pull them. So you got that little like round. So you can adjust however you need to. Um, the other thing is you can just like gently do that support hand again. Do the grippy. Oh, this is my grippy. And then with this, you're gonna be, you're gonna do the hand thing here. You're gonna lean back a little bit. So you're kind of coming around the edge of the leg a little. And again, this is kind of frictions with clothing. Um, if you're using lotion, like you'll have a lot more slide here. But in this case, like you're kind of grabbing that muscle and hanging on to it for a moment. You can do that support hand here if that's helpful. You want to get the ankle, not so much the top of the foot, because that way, you know, you're not pressing on that joint. Yeah. yeah. You can feel that kind of like meaty part. That's your gastrocnemius. That's a good one to mess with. And then you can do the opposite for the other side. You know, press. And the side you want to be gentle, because you can torque someone's knee if you're turning in too much. So you're just going to be gentle. You can do the support hand up here if you're more comfortable with it. Okay. And then you can adjust it where I'm going to bring your foot down. I'm going to put my leg on top of your foot. And then I'm just going to scoot behind, so I'm like lacing my fingers behind the leg. And I'll leave that. And that compresses the back of the leg. And again, this is like you're just using your body weight, you're hanging on, you're doing some, you know, gravity movement where you're just... Yeah, you're decompressing your arms a little bit, you're, you know, doing that stretch there. It doesn't take a lot because all you have to do is do a little bit of like a scoop and then you just hang out. Alright, let's have you switch. We'll do it again.
So what you're doing is sitting off to the side. Um, you kind of got that knee there. Are you ticklish on the feet? Okay. So you can place the foot on your knee. Um, so what I was saying, if someone is ticklish, you don't want to get underneath that um, arch here. But you can do that from pressure. You can grab into that area. You're doing the hook again. Kind of just leaning forward into it. So this is the opposite of what we've been doing where we're leaning back, leaning forward. Get the squish underneath that ankle bone, you'll feel that little round thing there right under it, and then lean. Perfect. And you can go right above it and do it again. You do the squishy on the heel where you're squishing back. And that one, I was saying you're going to move that way, so you're moving forward. does differently. So I'm just saying hello, I do a couple squishes. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull towards us. We're just doing that hook and then leaning back. And so you've got a good angle where you're coming down that leg a little bit. That's great, especially if you have some lotion that's a good one to do with. So you're just kind of grabbing into that muscle. How's that feeling? You can always support with the ankle or the knee. Now when you're doing the outside pressing in, you're going to be pressing that direction. Relaxing, the rest of it is like my fingers are in contact. Okay, but so this that's is what's really relax, you relax mm -hmm. up here and just like that's your force. Okay. Yeah, so because I'm not I'm not grabbing you, I'm not gripping you for your life. Like I'm just my hand is there and then I'm leaning into it. I get what you mean. Yeah. So you're not overdoing. Yeah, and you'll you'll feel it over time. You'll get better at oh, little tender there. Oh no no I thought I was just, just yeah I was gonna say you'll get better at it over time. Um, We're gonna scoot sideways, gonna put that foot down. Oh, yeah. Pull towards you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can kind of feel like when you do that lean, it doesn't take a lot of effort, does it? It kind of feels good. Yeah. Get a little decompression in your wrists and your shoulders while you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, see all of these, like I said, it's easy to adjust your body mechanics. You can sit, you can stand, you can kneel. Um, you know, like I said, if you're if it's something where like you're hurting at night, like on the bed it's a little easier to be on your on, on the knees and like working that way, but it's not always that comfortable. So you can always adjust where you're sitting next to someone instead or you're um, you know, standing off to the side. Mm -hmm. 